Hey guys, my name is Lior and I'm the R&D coordinator at Ipna Technologies. I'm very happy to be here uh, and share with you some of the latest research that we've been doing regarding terpenes and corona. Um, if you have any questions, just write them down and, and we'll go over it in the questions and answers session. So before I dive into the research, uh, I wanted to give you some background about who we are. Uh, so Ibna is an R&D company founded in 2014 and based in Israel. We research cannabis phytochemicals with a special focus on a group of molecules called terpenes. Other than manufacturing terpene-based formulations, um, we, we have a goal of understanding the pharmacological properties of these compounds and create effect-targeted products. Now, I think that my presentation will give you a little sneak peek of how such a uh, product development looks like from the research side. And I hope you'll find it interesting. And if I, I feel like it would be a little, uh, it will get a little biological. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to take it slow and explain uh, carefully when, when we get there. So I did want to give you a short background about terpenes even though you're probably already familiar with these molecules. Uh, so terpenes are secondary metabolites uh, found in many plant species, including cannabis. Uh, in cannabis itself, um, today there are over 200 uh, known terpenes and we keep on finding more and more. In the plant itself, terpenes have a very important role of fighting pathogens, um, and, and diseases. And what's interesting is that in the body, they have a very different, in our bodies and in animal bodies, they have very different role um, and have scientifically proven medicinal properties such as analgesia, um, anti-anxiety, anti-inflammatory, and many more. And that's what makes these molecules very interesting um, and with a very big potential to be used uh, medicinally. So when the corona started to spread um, worldwide, uh, we decided to put our research focus on corona and terpenes. Um, Ibn sees terpenes as really great candidates against for uh, the prevention and treatment of corona. And here I listed the, the top uh, reasons why, why we decided to focus on that. So first thing, uh, terpenes are known to be antiviral agents. Uh, there's a lot of literature and research about it. Uh, they fight um, from the HIV, HIV virus to HSV virus and, and many others. Secondly, terpenes are known to be strong anti-inflammatory agents. Thirdly, they, they occur naturally, so they, they're found really all around us, uh, from orange peels to lavender. Uh, they're pretty easy to extract. Um, they're very legal, so very easy to ship worldwide. Um, and that's what really makes them uh, a great raw ingredient to work with. And finally, which I think is uh, one of the most important reasons, um, terpenes are pretty safe. Uh, they have very low toxicity. Uh, we eat to them and breathe them every day. Um, and there's no really severe side effects of using them. So Ibna's uh, COVID mission was to utilize terpenes, antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties to introduce immediate, safe, and scalable COVID treatment and prevention solutions. Um, just to, to be clear, we were not going into this development in order to come up with a vaccination. Um, the, the idea of this development was to come up with a formulation that can be used in, in different form factors and can be used on a daily basis uh, for healthy people, for, um, for sick people, uh, for uh, age, younger age groups will probably the younger age groups will be vaccinated last, or people with health limitations that prefer not to vac to be vaccinated. Um, so it's really a formulation for everyone to be to to be used and to feel extra secure and protected. 
so that, that was the idea. It was important for me to kind of uh, clarify that. So our approach in developing uh, this product was to first look at how the coronavirus infects its host. Uh, so that when the coronavirus enters the body, either through ingestion or inhalation, uh, there is a viral replication that happens inside the host cells. Um, at some point, there is a, um, an immunity response from the body. In many cases, it leads to a cytokine storm. Uh, I'll give you a little explanation what cytokine storm is. Uh, it is a very um, uh, intense and aggressive response of the body where it produces uncontrollable amounts of pro-inflammatory cytokines and that just leads to hyperinflammation, uh, tissue damage, and in many cases it also leads to death. Uh, right now the cytokine storm is considered the most dangerous and potentially life-threatening event related to COVID-19. So looking at that we decided to produce a multi-purpose formulation um, and to focus on the following steps. Uh, the first one is the viral replication, and the second one is the cytokine storm. So before um, I'm gonna go into the research, I do want to give you a little bit about background, a little background about this product. So this product is a terpene formulation called NTVRL. Um, there's really a lot of, uh, research and development and optimization that happened uh, to come up with this formulation. We used our extensive phytochemical database uh, that contains a lot of medicinal uh, data on, on phytochemicals. And we came up with this formulation for uh, a multi-purpose formulation. Uh, the first, uh, pretty much the first function is to have anti-inflammatory activity for conditions such as the cytokine storm. And the second purpose is the antiviral activity. Uh, so the formulation contains 30 terpenes. Most of them are found in cannabis. They're all natural, high purity, and generally recognized as safe. And, um, and yeah, and this formulation is also patented. So now I'm gonna dive into the research. Um, so get your, your biological glasses on. Um, so our first experiment was to assess NTVRL's anti-inflammatory properties. Um, we collaborated with our partner Canisol for this. Uh, what we did is we took uh, blood cells from human participants, healthy participants, um, as you can see, it happened in a, in a, in a petri dish, in a 96 well plate. Um, in this plate, we pretty much triggered the immune system, which means um, we triggered the inflammation in the cells, and the cells naturally produced pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now, in order to test our, our drug or our formulation, we put our formulation on the cells after the inflammation trigger, uh, in order to see if it was able to lower the cytokine release. Uh, so our, our positive control for this test was CBD, which is known to be a very anti-inflammatory molecule. There's a lot, of, uh, a lot of data and information about it showing that CBD is able to lower inflammation and lower uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. And the other positive control was dexamethasone, which is um, a, a drug that is currently used today to treat uh, corona patients. Um, and it's been shown to work great. Uh, but of course, because it's uh, based on steroids, uh, there is some side effects to it. So what we did is uh, after we added the test items to the inflamed cells, uh, we, um, we tested how much was the cytokines inhibited. So I hope that makes sense. And, and if not, then I'll be happy to, to answer, um, answer your questions. Uh, and I'll jump to the results. So these are the results. I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, so this is a graph showing the percent cytokine inhibition. 
So the more, uh, the, the higher the cytokine inhibition is, the better we control the inflammation. Um, the different colors that you see here are the different cytokines. Uh, these four cytokines are the main cytokines that happen, the, the big players in the cytokine storm. Um, as we can see, uh, dexamethasone uh, was able to inhibit the cytokines at around 30 to 40%. Uh, CBD was able to inhibit it really nicely at around 60 to uh, 80%. Here is NTVRL, where um, there's a, an increase in, in concentration. And we can see that the more we put NTVRL, the higher the inhibition is. And what's nice is we can see that NTVRL was, uh, had a higher inhibition than CBD and also um, compared to dexamethasone, which is really nice because it's just uh, terpenes by themselves had higher uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine inhibition than dexamethasone, uh, which is really great. And what's really interesting is that NTVRL plus CBD had the higher pro-inflammatory cytokine inhibition. So that controlled inflammation the best. Um, what do we see here? Is it entourage effect? Is it an additive effect? It's still not really uh, something that we can uh, say yet, uh, but it's a very, very interesting uh, effect here and interaction between NTVRL and CBD. So to summarize uh, this, uh, this experiment is we saw the NTVRL by itself and with CBD had a significant anti-inflammatory effect. And that kind of gave us, gave us the, the green light to uh, continue and um, do the, the other tests that we wanted to. So the, the next test was to test NTVRLs antiviral effect. So we did this experiment with our partner, Pharmaseed. Um, and in this experiment, again, it was in a Petri dish. It was not in humans. Uh, what we did is we took human lung cells. We chose lung cells because uh, the coronavirus attacks these cells first, and that's, when, that's where the virus spreads. Um, we used a, a less aggressive type of coronavirus. And what we did is we actually tried three different incubation conditions. Uh, we did that in order to understand the potential antiviral mechanism of our formulation. It's a very well-known um, uh, uh, method in the literature. So our first uh, incubation uh, condition was to pretreat the lung cells with antiviral and then expose it to the virus. The second condition was to pretreat the virus and then add it to the cells. And the third condition was to infect the cells and then treat it with NTVRL. Um, so that was, that was the, the setup of the, of the experiment. And because it's still an ongoing study, uh, I was able, I'm not able to show you the full experiment, but I am showing you the best part and really the cherry on top. Um, and as you can see, now you can see, uh, these are the very uh, preliminary results. Um, this is the, the experiment where we did the pre-incubation of the cells and then virus exposure. So I'll kind of walk you through this, these images and, and explain what we see here. Um, so image A shows healthy lung cells untouched as they are under the microscope. Uh, you can see that they're linear, no weird shapes and uh, just uh, healthy cells. In image B, you can see that the cell, you can see cell, lung cells that are infected with coronavirus. Um, we see that there's some misshaping, uh, some swelling and plump, plumping, clumping of the cells. Um, this is a, a very classic um, infected cell image. Uh, what, what happens is that the virus enters the cell, replicates itself, causing the cell to change its shape, and at some point the, the cell bursts and, and dies. Um, so that's, that's a, a sick uh, lung cells. And what's really nice is that image C shows lung cells 
that were pre-treated with NTVRL for a couple of hours and then exposed to the virus. Now, what we see here, and we also saw in the numbers, is that the cells was, were really protected and were able to stay alive. Um, you know, you can see that the, the, they're not really, they didn't really change their shapes. And again, you can see it in the numbers uh, that I'm, I'm still unable to show to you, but that the cells were, were almost 100% uh, alive and the virus was not interrupting them at all. And that kind of suggests that antiviral by itself may have preventative antiviral action, uh, which is very, very exciting. And what's, um, what's very interesting as well is that image D shows uh, long cells that were pre-treated with antiviral and with CBD. Uh, we decided to use CBD in this experiment as well, uh, just for the sake of consistency. We also saw that there are some studies that show that CBD has also some antiviral effect. Um, so we did that as well for this one, and that showed really the best results. You can see that image D and image A are very similar. Uh, the cells look really healthy and almost untouched, um, and that was really, really good results. Um, so what we can pretty much conclude here is that antiviral by itself and the CBD had a significant antiviral effect when applied directly on the host cells before the virus infection or before the virus introduction. So I kind of wanted to uh, summarize very quickly uh, what, we, what we saw. Uh, so from the first experiment, uh, we saw that antiviral um, could be an effective anti-inflammatory agent and may potentiate other immunomodulators such as CBD. Secondly, we saw that antiviral with and without CBD may have a preventative antiviral activity against coronavirus. Thirdly, uh, we really saw the power of formulation uh, in this experiment and in other uh, experiments of ours, we always saw that a formulation worked much better than individual compounds, both in efficacy and in toxicity. And that really kind of uh, explains and, and shows how important it is to, to know uh, how to put a formulation together. And um, that's really something that Ibna has been developing and working on uh, since day one. Uh, so that's always uh, really great to see that. And finally, um, we saw an interesting interaction between antiviral and CBD. Um, the, there was always, a, let's say, a, a, they potentiate each other. Uh, we still don't know if it's a, an entourage effect, a synergetic effect, or an additive effect. Uh, that's something that requires more research, and we are planning on doing that and, and find out. And really, our next big step is to take this formulation, this really great formulation, and to, um, to a clinical trial. That's our 2021 mission. Uh, the idea is to treat um, early stage uh, patients that have COVID-19. And the idea is to have this formulation in an inhalation product where the active ingredients can reach the lungs directly and treat it directly uh, pretty much stop the inflammation and at the same time stop the, the virus, uh, the viral replication. And we're, it's something that we're working on and really hoping to start very soon. Uh, and I'm hoping to, to be able to share with you as soon as we, we have some results. And before I'm done, I wanted to thank our research team, our advisors and our partners. Uh, they've been doing a really great job in the past year and uh, really it, it, I couldn't have been, uh, you know, I, I was not able to show you what we've been doing if it wasn't without them. Uh, so I wanted to thank them all and uh, I want to thank you for listening to me and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you, you found it interesting. Thanks.